Peace be unto you. Your Majesties, Excellencies, Highnesses, I welcome you to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and I convey to you the regards of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and his best wishes for the success of our summit. Our meeting today comes at a time when our region and the world are facing huge defining challenges that necessitate intensifying joint cooperation within the framework of the UN Charter, which is based on respecting state sovereignty and values and non-interference in their internal affairs and respecting their independence and territory integrity. We hope that our summit establishes a new era of joint cooperation to deepen the strategic partnership between our countries and the United States in order to serve our common interests and strengthen the security and development in this region, which is vital for the whole world. Majesties, Excellency, and Highnesses, the enormous challenges that have impacted the world due to COVID-19 pandemic and the geopolitical Political situations require more unified international efforts for the recovery of the global economy and the achievement of food and health security. The environmental challenges that face the world presently, on top of which are climate change and the international community's commitment to keep the Earth's temperature to the level set out in, Paris, in the Paris Agreement, warrant realistic and responsible engagement to achieve sustainable development through adopting a balanced approach with a gradual responsible transition towards more sustainable energy sources taken into consideration the conditions and priorities of each state. Adopting unrealistic policies to reduce emissions through the exclusion of the main sources of energy without taking into consideration the impact of these policies on the social and economic pillars of sustainable development and global supply chains will lead in the coming years to unprecedented inflation, increased fuel prices, increased unemployment and exasperation of dangerous social and security problems, including poverty, famine, escalation of crime, extremism and terrorism. We emphasize that the global economic growth is strongly linked to benefiting from all available energy sources in the world, including hydrocarbon, with control over their emissions through the use of clean technologies to enhance the world's ability to reach net zero by 2050, while maintaining the security of energy supplies. Accordingly, the Kingdom has adopted a balanced approach to reach net zero emissions by using the circular carbon economy and in line with its development and economic diversification plans without prejudice to growth or supply chains. All of this shall be done via development technologies with global participation to address emissions through the Saudi Green Initiative and Middle East Green Initiative to support these efforts locally and regionally. We stress the importance of continuity to promotion and promotion of injecting investment in fossil energy and clean technologies for the next two decades to fulfill the growing global demand. It is important to assure investors of these that these adopted policies will not present a threat to their investment to avoid their withholding from investing and to prevent any energy supply shortage that may impact the global economy. The Kingdom will play its role in this era as it announced to increase the level of the maximum sustainable production capacity to more than 13 million barrels. Beyond that, the Kingdom will not have any uh, further production capacity. The future of the region that we seek require adopting a vision that places its priorities in achieving security, stability and prosperity, one that is based on mutual respect among the countries of the region, deepening common cultural and social ties confronting security and political challenges and cooperating towards achieving comprehensive economic development. We call on Iran as a neighboring country with whose people we have religious and cultural ties to cooperate with the countries of the region to be part of the vision through upholding the principles of the international legitimacy and refrain from uh, interfering in the internal affairs of uh, other countries and cooperate with IAEA to fulfill its commitments in this regard. As part of the Kingdom's vision aiming to achieve security and stability in the region, the Kingdom has supported all efforts to reach a Yemeni Yemeni political solution in accordance with the three references. The Kingdom also exerted its efforts to sustain the current ceasefire and we will continue to provide humanitarian assistance for the brotherly Yemeni people. We affirm that the prosperity and well-being of the region require accelerating finding comprehensive just solution for the Palestinian issue in accordance with the principles and resolutions of the international legitimacy and the Arab Peace Initiative. We are delighted to see the, uh, that Iraq has recently improved its security and stability, which will reflect on the brotherly people uh, with a prosperity, well-being and positive interaction with the Arab uh, and regional environment. Based on this, we commend the signing of the two agreements of electricity connection between Iraq and the Kingdom and the GCC countries. This will contribute to Iraq's electricity needs. We also note 
the electricity connection project underway between the kingdom and both Jordan and Egypt. The integrity of the security, uh, stability and prosperity of the region necessitate finding realistic political solutions uh, to other crises, uh, especially in Syria and Libya, to ensure the end of suffering uh, of their brotherly people uh, with all of their components. We are optimistic that this summit will result in creating a comprehensive framework for a new era to bring hope to the use of the region for a bright uh, a future where we can achieve their, uh, their uh, aspiration in ambitious, prosperous countries and showcase their world of noble pride and honor, worthy message and values. We call onto the world to respect these values and uh, as we respect theirs, to strengthen the partnership and serve the region of the world. I now give the floor to President Joseph Biden.